In the event of a flood or a severe storm, what's the first thing to give out? High winds can bring down transmission lines and rising waters can trip circuit breakers. And in either case, the result is the same. The electricity goes out. Back in the unenlightened past, you'd have a truck with a tank full of diesel to get the family away to safety if required, and perhaps a small petrol generator to provide electricity until the supply is restored. But in the brave new net zero world, we'll have neither of those things. And so tough luck if you need to escape from a rapidly approaching bushfire and your EV is out of charge. But this is just the start of the insanity. In future, that precious electricity that you might be lucky enough to have in your EV's battery won't be yours to use anymore, because the poor grid, starved of reliable baseload generation, struggling to cope with unreliable wind and solar, and forever teetering on the brink of collapse, needs your electricity just to keep itself working. I wish I could say this was just an April Fool's joke, but unfortunately, it's July. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer, now Sydney-based YouTuber. Be sure to follow me on the usual socials for more content, links in the description, and please make sure you're subscribed and have enabled all notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. Well, this will certainly cause some next level range anxiety when even the owner won't know how much electricity will be in their EV when they wake up in the morning. Has the grid decided to suck your battery dry? Shame you have that important appointment to get to. This is the kind of logical pretzel the Net Zero and EV fanboys twist themselves into when they try and rationalise the idiocy of a grid run only on wind and solar. A stupid idea like that creates huge problems itself, which must then be, quote, solved, unquote, by even more stupid ideas. Wind and solar are so unreliable and unpredictable that the electrification zealots have proposed that EV batteries be used to stabilise the grid by donating power back into the grid when demand is too high and, of course, discharging your EV in the process. This bonkers idea known as Vehicle to Grid V2G uses your expensive EV as a battery energy storage system for the grid. And why will we need battery energy storage systems for the grid? because there won't be any reliable dispatchable power generation like we've had for decades. All of this nonsense is reported breathlessly in the Climate Catastrophist Age and Sydney Morning Herald newspapers, without a single critical thought in the process. Electric vehicles can charge to the rescue, get it, in blackouts. Electric vehicles could provide a lifeline for the electricity grid in times of crisis, going by a world-first Australian trial in which EVs immediately discharged their batteries in response to a network failure in which storms cut power to half a million homes. Victoria's power supply was thrown into chaos in February when toppled transmission towers at Anarchy, west of Geelong, cut power to 530,000 homes. But the event was a perfect opportunity to demonstrate the untapped resources under the bonnet of hundreds of thousands of cars across the country. Actually, under the floor pan of hundreds of thousands of cars across the country, but anyway. When the transmission lines fell, 16 electric vehicles in a trial located 520 kilometres away in Canberra, as the crow flies, detected the disruption and within seconds pumped power back into the grid. The trial tested what is known as vehicle-to-grid technology, in which devices fitted to EVs can detect small variations in the frequency of the grid that could be disruptions to power supply hundreds of kilometres away. Conducted by the Australian National University's Battery Storage and Grid Program, the trial supplied only 107 kilowatts of power, a negligible amount compared with national electricity demand. But according to lead researcher Dr Bjorn Sturmberg, the results show the tantalising potential of EVs to firm up supply. The event in February was the first real-world test of our vehicles and chargers. We now know a vehicle-to-grid system can work, Sternberg said. They're essentially big batteries on wheels. Yeah, big batteries on wheels that don't belong to you. Isn't it great that your EV that you paid money for is not really yours at all, but it's just a plaything for the electricity grid? Wouldn't that be a great way to wake up to a natural disaster on your doorstep, with an EV whose battery has been sucked dry by the grid as a desperate measure to keep it going for a few minutes, and which has probably by now collapsed anyway, and now you have a brick as an EV and no way to charge it. Brilliant. As one of my contributors said in an email today, 
Do these people understand that EVs are in a continuous state of energy poverty and are desperately trying to get energy out of the grid, not available to pump energy they don't have back in? And any EV owner with half a brain who was charging their car at the time the grid goes down would race to the charger and disconnect their vehicle to make sure energy isn't siphoned off when the likelihood of recharging over the next few days is diminished. All of this is completely unnecessary. If the grid had reliable, dependable, dispatchable power to deal with outages and fluctuations, there wouldn't be any need to rely on other people's EV batteries to keep it going. This is third world level incompetence on the part of our government to believe that we can tear our electricity grid to pieces and then try to patch it up with harebrained schemes like this. I believe that Australia might be the only country in the developed world daft enough to try and run an entire grid on just wind, solar and batteries. Unless this ignorant government can be stopped before it's too late, Australia's electricity grid will collapse in a heap.